Hi, everybody, and welcome to Broadway.com's Live at Five. It is Friday, March 15th, and I'm Eric King. And I'm Andy Lefkowitz. And over here in the producer's chair, we've got Caitlin Gallup. Hi, everyone. What is up? Happy Friday. Happy almost St. Patrick's Day. (laughs) And a very cool guest with us today. Yes, we have Tony Winner Schuler Hensley here from The Ferryman. What? What? Can't wait to talk to him all about The Ferryman and some other things as well. But first... We're going to do today's top five. All right. You all are going to have to get into a fight for these tickets. Actually, I think they're already sold out, but that's fine. I love it. This is sold out, uh, but this is super exciting. We found out today that the third of the four Musical Mondays concerts that Second Stage is doing, kind of looking back on earlier productions they've done, has announced casting. This is a... A one-night concert of Pasek and Paul's Dogfight, which premiered at Second Stage in 2012. So first off, we found out that Derek Klenna is going to be reprising his role as Eddie Birdlace, and that Michaela Diamond, star of The Cher Show, is going to take on the role of Rose Fenny. So this is happening this Monday, March 18th at 7 o'clock at Second Stage. Uh, it's completely sold out, but do all that you can to get tickets. Yeah, I know that I would kill to see yes. Derek Klenna. Um, reprise that role. Seriously. So good. Uh, great and Michaela, songs, too. Totally, man. And Michaela's is amazing it? in Chair Show. That's right. Uh, this is the role that was originated by Lindsay Mendez in the original production. Um, yeah. So. We've got a great fresh face of Michaela. Yes, uh, we sure check do. that out, too. Yeah. All right, we found out that these two music legends are joining the Mary Poppins cast in the West End. Yes, okay. So, Petula Clark of yes. Downtown fame. She's yes. saying that. She brought it to life. She uh, rose to her stardom using that song. She is going to play the Bird Woman and theater veteran Joseph Milson is going to play George Banks in Mary Poppins on the West End. And this is also a touring production in the UK. Yeah. So uh, the previous announced ZZ Stralin in the title role of Mary and Charlie Stemp as Bert will join them. Oh, um, now, this production begins performances at its original home in the West End, the Prince Edward Theater, on October 23rd, with an opening night set for November 13th. Um, Clark has been on Broadway. She's been on the West End. In Broadway, she was on. She was in Blood Brothers, and uh, she was also in these films, Finian's Rainbow and Goodbye, Mr. Chips. So Indeed. stunning. Yes. Uh, Milson's theater credits include Apologia, Macbeth, Much Ado About Nothing, and Love Never Dies. So that'll be really exciting to yeah, round totally. out that cast. Um, people in the West End and all over the United Kingdom are very lucky to have those two. Yes. All right, and Kuka, come on, because you haven't heard that joke <laughs> enough. Uh, your favorite new musical is recording a cast album. Yeah, so this is kind of unexpected, but super exciting. So we found out today that Be More Chill is going to record an original Broadway cast album. Mm-hmm. Now, as many of us know, Be More Chill's huge fan base kind of launched because of the original cast album Mm -hmm. that they produced after their run at Two River Theater in New Jersey. So it's kind of neat that now we'll have the Broadway cast completely kind of, you know, captured on this new cast album from Ghostlight Records. Um, It has a release date set to come out this spring with an exact date to come. Uh, So... Cross your fingers that it comes out soon. Yeah, and a lot of those a lot of those great actors who were on the original cast album from what, like 2015? Yeah, I think that's right. So a lot of them actually came to the Broadway production too. So you'll get all of those, you know, little changes. Yes. I think fans will be really excited to hear that. Anything that I can have Tiffany's man's voice recorded on. I'm okay with that. (laughs) <laughs> All right. Um, we got some new casting for the UK premiere of Amelie. Um, yeah. So that's exciting. Yes. More here. UK casting news. Tis the day. So Danny Mac is going to join Audrey Brisson in the UK premiere of Amelie. Now, Amelie was on Broadway and did its run in 2017. So those two uh, West End veterans, Danny Mac, he was also on Strictly Come Dancing in 2016. He will play Nino Quincampois. Is that it? That, that sounds sure. about right to okay, me. Okay, sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, the role uh, that Adam Chandler Barat played on Broadway. Exactly. Yeah. And the role that <laughs> Philippa Sue played, Amelie, uh, will be played by Audrey Brisson for the touring production. And um, so, yeah, this is going to run from April 11th through September 21st. This is obviously based on the Oscar nominated movie of the same name. Yeah. And joining them will feature uh, Oliver Grant, Samuel Morgan Graham, Sinead Saunders, Johnson Willis. Callan McCarthy, Phelan, 
Cunningham, Kate Robson Stewart, Josh Sneesby, Jess Unwin, and Rachel Dawson. That's a lot of Irish names. Yes, and we have to save it the ferryman, for right? the ferryman. <laughs> That's later. <laughs> All right, and last, but certainly not least, um, oh. one of your favorite people is going to be starring in a new a yeah ABC pilot. ABC yeah. pilot. Totes. All right, it's a it's a television pilot. Yeah. <laughs> so we found out today that two-time Tony winner Christian Borel was cast in this new pilot called Until the Wedding. So this is based on a hit Israeli television series that has a different title because it's in Hebrew. Um, and I can't speak Hebrew, but I'm not going to try to figure out what the heck that. Translation is, but anyway, yeah. But anyway, until until the wedding, um, also stars Olivia Thirlby and E.J. Bonilla, and here's what it's about. Until the wedding explores the intimate relationship between Adrian, played by Thirlby, and Danny, played by Bonilla, uh, as they're forced to reckon with the realities of love and marriage. Christian Borrell will play the role of Miles, Adrian's accomplished brother and stay-at-home dad. Yeah. So this is why a, not? It's a pilot, so you know. Fingers crossed. Yeah, definitely. Um, it sounds fun and promising. So uh, we love yeah. to see theater actors uh, booking pilots, working yes, on TV, and we love yeah. Christian. So yes. it's true. Yes. Okay, and then a few more housekeeping items. Yeah. We have some things up on the site because we're a website that puts things up, and uh, <laughs> we've got Mana Flamacha casting that you can go look at. Um, a very exciting yeah, star of that. Totally, man. Um, Kiss Me Kate opening night coverage. We've got. A red carpet challenge, as always. Yes, so good. And uh, Hillary Ann Clinton. I interviewed Zach Orth, who plays yes. campaign strategist Mark Penn. And it starts previews tomorrow. And it starts previews tomorrow, absolutely. So that's part of our spring preview series, which has recently launched. And you can go watch a video and uh, look at my interview with him. Yes. And uh, yeah, a few other things. Uh, um, Stephanie J. Block, watch it. She performed Turn Back Time. Thank God. On, on Live uh, with Kelly and Ryan. On Live today. with Kelly and Ryan. Yeah. And the Public Theater Gala. Uh, we've got a, what, a gallery? No, nope. They just announced it. It's they a good just time. announced it. Be so there they're in celebrating June. women of the public uh, this summer at the Delacorte. That's great. So, yeah. Just in time for Women's Month, which is there this you month. Go. Good job. Okay, and uh, Caitlin, would you like to introduce Schuler? I would love nothing Thank more. Thank you so much, yeah, Andy. You bet, man. All right, yeah. y'all, you are already sending in your questions, so keep them coming. But um, if you didn't know, which you probably should, uh, Schuler Hensley is currently appearing in The Ferryman as Tom Kettle. He earned a Tony Award for his performance in Oklahoma, and his other Broadway credits include Les Miserables, Tarzan, Young Frankenstein, Waiting for Godot, and No Man's Land. He has been seen on screen in Neon Joe Werewolf Hunter. Love that. Shades of Blue, the OA, and more. You can follow him on Twitter, at Shuhin, and leave all your questions in the comments below. Please welcome Schuler and Eric. Hello, Hi, Schuler. everyone. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. So, it's great to be here. I love this place. This is amazing. Yeah, isn't it great? It's, it's incredible. It's like a whole club scene going on here. <laughs> we said we would turn on the strobes later. <laughs> um, okay, so you're in The Ferryman. Yes. You're part of the... Brand new cast. Almost, almost all of the cast has turned over. Right. And uh, when did you guys start? We started rehearsals. Uh, I think we're now in our eleventh week of being together. So it's the third third week of performance, mm -hmm. and um, we had about six or seven weeks of rehearsal. So it seems like a long time, but it's such a great, and, and the fact that there's so many uh, in the new cast, it was like creating a show from scratch. Right. And, um, I so, wanted to ask about that, because, yeah. I mean, you came in with, you know, a bunch of other actors who um, are replacing the original uh, uh, England cast, mm -hmm. and so what is that like to come in and, as you said, create that new show, and what are the logistics behind that? Well, I think what made this different is the fact that there were so many new cast members. Um, so you, it wasn't the same thing as, you know, maybe going in and and uh, a single actor going into a show with a bunch of people who've been doing it for a while. So mm -hmm. the, the rehearsal process was really about us uh, learning and finding this play together. And Jez has written it's just such an extraordinary piece of writing that um, pretty much everything you need to know as an actor is in the text. Mm -hmm. um, and we discovered it together. So that's what made this, I think, unique and special is that I saw it 
uh, once before um, before we went on yeah. just to get the logistics because there's so much going on. There's animals, there's babies, there's 20 plus actors in the in the cast. What um, was your first reaction to seeing it for the first time? I mean, that's a it's an affecting. It is, it is, but what's great about it is it's so realistically lifelike. Mm -hmm. um, the chaos that happens in a in a giant kitchen area, for lack of a better term, uh, the set's yeah. amazing, and and just the life of a of a family and a farm family and a harvest at harvest time and just the the chaos that having that many right. kids on stage. Yes. Mm -hmm. Having live animals, which I have to say, <laughs> as an actor, um, everyone talks about this idea of living in the moment. But when I have live animals on me, I have to be in the moment because you never know what, what they're going to do or how of they're going to respond. And I love that. I, love I definitely want to know more about the animals. More on that in a bit. <laughs> you play Tom Kettle. Yes. Tell me more about the character of Tom Kettle. Tom Kettle is... Um, so this is set in Northern Ireland, but but the um, he's the only Englishman in the mm -hmm. the cast. Yeah. So it's a bit of a mystery about the history of this character. He apparently was found by the owner of the farm when when Tom Kettle was twelve years old. Mm -hmm. There's something not quite right with him that's a bit off. Um, I don't want to label what that would be, but he's uh, there's a great line in in the play that says um, he's not slow he's just unhurried right so, which is a perfect <laughs> description a of so this character um, and as you said it, it's sort of um, there's all this chaos at the start of the play with you know children coming up yeah, and down the stairs right. and people entering and exiting and all these characters being introduced and then I think it's really interesting how Tom kind of lumbers in yeah. and he really changes the the dynamic of the whole the pace yeah he's he's real and and um he's based on an actual person oh um but it's a it's but this person was a, a massive person who worked outdoors and and you know so so tom kettle sort of gives you that feeling of the land and um of the outside and mm -hmm. of working with animals and and the kids you know find him fascinating he's been a part of this family for for 30 years yeah. so um it's that guy you know so he handles rabbits rabbits and geese geese yes you have animals don't you like yeah. a variety of animals yeah i have that? a farm i live in georgia okay and so we have a farm that i was born and raised on oh. and we have four rescue dogs i a uh, rabbit um we had some hamsters we have canadian geese we have a lake so this felt like home, actually, yeah. coming um, onto the Broadway stage. Do you think <laughs> you, you had to, maybe a leg up on the on the former Tom Kettle, Justin Edwards, when you're you know introduced to the geese? And yes, like, yeah, they knew instantly that <laughs> that I've worked with animals before. Wow, and who's boss? No, but it, what's interesting is also working with the animal trainers mm -hmm. and getting a history of these animals. The geese, especially were trained from just out of the egg. I mean, they, which is amazing to me that yeah. they, they have to take them so early so they mm. get comfortable with, with being around people and being handled. And, and the, then the rabbit, Pierce, is extraordinary. He was a baby too. And it's all about this slow process of training animals. Mm -hmm. I don't think people get, understand that it's a life process to and you have to train the babies the real yes. human babies too. yes they the are trained babies. from stage <laughs> and i actually attended the baby audition the other day i oh, just love tell us about that well i was fascinated what is that and you know and and basically i think it's about um just functionality on stage you don't want a baby if it's on its back to be able yeah. to flip over what do they do yeah. um well they don't they don't flip okay. over um, <laughs> hopefully, can't. that's their only job. <laughs> yes. And and the, and how they how they are okay with being in a big space, and mm -hmm. do they cry easily? And you know, little things like that are important. But it's just it's extraordinary. These these kids are 
the from the babies and the young kids, mm-hmm. they're just all so uh, amazing. They're in in this world. You know, yeah. I, I can remember back as a a kid myself that you didn't think of technique or anything. You just thought, well, okay, today I'll be I'll be from Northern Ireland, and you're <laughs> from Northern Ireland. And, and the it, kids are the kids are mainly the same in this cast as they were uh, back in you know. February when yes, they're pretty much the same yeah. as well as Aunt Maggie Faraway. Right. So what's it like to come in and them sort of uh, are they are they helping you guide you through this experience? Yeah, that's uh, we I had this conversation with one of the mothers the other day about the ki- where the, all the kids are American is that's right right they're all from the states oh, okay. so they joined the British cast mm-hmm. so in the when when it opened in mm-hmm. October. So they felt like, okay, we're now having to be put into a show that's already in existence. Well, now the new cast of <laughs> us, the kids are the veterans, and we're sort of coming into their show. So it was a nice dynamic for them, I think, to right. feel like, hey, let's show you around a bit. Let's show you on set, and here's here's the animals, and you know. So it's it's a it's added a real dimension to family, the, yeah. the, the mm-hmm. idea of family, with them being sort of in control. Yeah. <laughs> so this play, one more question about the ferryman, and then we'll move on yeah. to other stuff. But it ends in a very intense way. Yes, it's it does. It's an intense play. Yes. How do you come down after it? What do you do to sort of relax yourself after a show? Um, do you have to? I do, I do. I have to come down from any show, mm-hmm. but this one, I do wa- I walk a lot. I know oh, okay. I've th- I was saying today I think I've been here for several months and I've taken the subway twice. Really? Yeah, I walk everywhere. everywhere. Okay. So, um What's the farthest you've walked? Um according to my <laughs> iPhone, it's like 15 miles. Oh. In a, in a day. Dang. And you don't realize how much you walk in this town until you just do it. Right. But um it's it's an interesting journey and I'll go back to just his writing is so layered and um, everything's in the script and it's a true journey for an actor that you do feel like you've gone through a whole journey and then at the end even though it's a bit overwhelming and maybe surprising for the audience Mm -hmm. it's one of those things that makes sense as the actor and um, so you don't uh, I, I think you're like it's like a l- really long, wonderful workout. You're yeah. you're exhausted, but you're fulfilled yeah. at the end. Kind of comes to a nice conclusion. Yeah, yeah. So you're a Tony Award winner. <laughs> what? What? Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> For Judd in yes, Oklahoma. Yes. Yes. I want to know about that night that you won. Do you remember anything from that night? Um, I, I. I remember more about the season. Um, uh-huh. That was to me the I, it, the actual show and the and the Tonys. It's such a blur because there's so much going on. Yeah. But the season of getting a chance to go to you know luncheons with with people that you would maybe never meet before, who are also nominated for other shows, and just just the Broadway community. Who was the coolest person you met? Oh my gosh! Um, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you put me in a very uh, uh, probably Liam Neeson was one. Oh. Hugh, Hugh Jackman. Yeah. <laughs> that guy. Yeah, it's not like him for don't, a while. don't it's not know like you him. <laughs> um, it was. I think it was just if you turn, you know, Jane Krakowski was there, or you you just turn. Mm-hmm. From one side to another, and uh, um, Alan Alda, you know, wow. just people yeah. mm-hmm. that are from your growing up from television, from film, from stage, mm-hmm. um, and being able to just sit down and have lunch with them. That mm-hmm. was what was so amazing to me. Um, I want Carol to Burnett, that's oh. another one I remember. Okay, that's a good one. Right? I'm glad you remember that one. <laughs> um, so you're from Georgia, as you yes. said. You did theater growing up, I assume? I was raised, I had an interesting childhood. My dad was an all-American football player, so I played sports, and my mother was a ballet director, so I did sports and ballet. Oh. 
That's why I can move so well. And that's why I'm hired for my <laughs> dance <laughs> first. Dance first. No, but I, I was so I was sort of raised on stage. Yeah. So I was lucky in the sense that that's all I ever knew. Yeah. And then I think I just want to I want to know because I stumbled upon this very interesting thing about you. You have a Tony Award, but you also have an award named after you. Yes. In Georgia. Yes, I do. It's called. The Schuler Award. The Schuler Award. Tell me about how those it's, came about. Well, <laughs> it's actually the Georgia High School Musical Theater Awards. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they were looking, this is our 12th year. It happens every April. I always go back and host. It's sort of um, like the Jimmy Awards. It but, is. But for Georgia. It was, it was uh, and it was based on like the Gene Kelly Awards. Oh, okay. You know, mm -hmm. a, a, several states have these awards. And it's basically a chance for musical theater kids in high school mm -hmm. to have an equivalent of their Tony Awards and actually okay. meet other kids from around the state. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we started with 13 high schools the first year. This is our 12th year. We have over 75 wow. high schools. Oh my gosh. It's wow. out of control. Why is, that, why is that important for you to do? Why, why do because you think that's... Because it's where I started from. Okay. I can remember and I, you know, I, everyone's like, oh, it's so nice of you to do this. I'm like, wait a minute. I'm getting as much out of it oh. because I can see in their eyes when they step out on this. And it's a 3,500-seat th state-of-the-art theater we mm -hmm. do it in. Mm -hmm. um, just that, that light in their eyes they get when they're, when they're doing this. And they get to come in for a week and put on a full-scale production show yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, scholarships. So yeah. it's it's a win win. I think that's awesome. Yeah, uh, Caitlin. Yes. I'm sure we have questions. We do. Oh. What's up with the questions? Um, speaking they? of um, meeting really cool people and working with them, yeah. uh, Scott wanted to know um, how was working with theater gods Sir Ian and Sir Patrick and Godot? <laughs> mm. Was it a unique learning experience? It was. Yes, it was extraordinary in that. We spent, um, we all had to, they had done Waiting for God, Godot, as Godot. they say, um, before. Mm -hmm. But the No Man's Land, the Pinter, none mm -hmm. of us had done. So we went out to Berkeley and ran it and rehearsed it. So I spent, I spent a, almost a year with these guys. And Have you ever been more intimidated? N well, I'll, I was intimidated the first day until I talked to Ian the first time. And... He actually said the day of the first rehearsal, he goes, oh, God, this is like the first day of school. <laughs> and he said, and I said, are you kidding me? You're Sir Ian McKellen. And he's like, it doesn't matter. Right. Because we all go through this um, mm -hmm. regardless of, you know, our history. And mm -hmm. I think that was an amazing thing that I learned from both of them is that we're really all in the same boat and that yeah. the excitement and energy it takes to do a show or a play never dies, no matter how much of a veteran you are. And there'd be times, they were in their you know, 70s when we did this, and there'd be times where they'd be tired, but as soon as they hit the lights of the stage, it'd just be a, it just, they just feel <laughs> It's like they're 20 this. again. Yes, it's yeah. incredible. So I was inspired by that as well. That's great. All right, um, another good question from Joanne is, between Young Frankenstein, Tarzan, The Whale, and others, you had many unique costumes and stage setups. Is there any role that stands out to you in your memory as particularly challenging? Uh, yes, the costume for The Whale, um, where if you don't know The Whale, the play, I played a 600-plus pound, morbidly obese, gay online tutor. Amazing. The most <laughs> amazing character. character actor role ever. But the suit was specially designed uh, to make me 600 plus pounds. And mm -hmm. um, you had to, I had to live yeah. in it from the first day of rehearsal. Because I was it looking changes. at it. Do you, do you go, do you go into the costume? You, you, you fit on, it fits on you from the front and then there's a zip in the back, oh, okay. but then there's the whole lower area and you just have to, you have to live in it. And it was made with these tiny beads uh, that wick sweat, which means wow. it draws it away from your body so mm -hmm. that you're not soaking wet. Oh, but okay. um, it just changed everything about how do you move? How do you breathe? How do you talk? How do you sit? Mm -hmm. Everything. and your relationship to space, yeah. you know, things that I 
would think I have plenty of room, I'd knock off the table. And that, mm -hmm. so those were, I love things like that. Um, and the, the Franken young Frankenstein, just having platform shoes, learning to dance in those. Yeah. So everything has had its challenge, but I'd say the whale was the biggest challenge. Okay. All right, and uh, one more question. Um, why do you think that audiences, um, either if they haven't seen The Ferryman yet or if they've already seen it, why do you think that it's worth um, a revisit or um, worth kind of experiencing this very specific family's With a new cast. Journey? I think the revisit um, has to do with the fact that this, and this is a cliche uh, used a lot when somebody says, it's an ensemble show. This is a ensemble show. Mm -hmm. yeah. Everyone in, in the cast gets a moment to shine in terms of the writing, but also you're always on stage living, it's a living, breathing life on stage. And you can't, as an audience member, you can't grasp everything that's going on. And in the writing too, every, I, I listen to it every, every show, and there's always something in it that I'm hearing for the first time, mm -hmm. which I think is extraordinary. Yeah. And I know it took uh, Jez about 15 years to complete this play, mm -hmm. and it shows because there's so much in it you really do need. And I meet people at the stage doors like, this is my seventh time seeing the play. Oh my gosh. And I didn't realize, you know, and they always follow it up by a new uh, understanding of something. You know? Yeah, it is jam packed with details yeah. and character development. Right. That's great. All right. If you haven't yet, or if you want to go back for a second time, which obviously we a encourage. Third or fourth. Seventh. <laughs> Seventh. Seven. Go to the Ferryman at the Jacobs Theater to see Schuler Hensley as Tom Kettle. Thank you so much for coming yes, today. Yes, it's my pleasure. It was nice to meet you. You too. All right, Caitlin, why don't you take us out? All right, y'all. Happy Friday. We made it. We are. We are in it. We are into the weekend. Mm -hmm. um, if you didn't know, which you probably do, if you watch Live at Five every day, you can actually listen to this interview as well as so many amazing others on our podcast if you search hashtag live at five on spotify on apple on all the places that you listen um join us next week as we are graced with the presence of people like christy altamar um christina Katrina, uh, katrina lank angie Schuer. yes wait yeah angie schwerer from the prom and so many others y'all have an amazing weekend bye <laughs>